It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back for a brand new series, and today we are going to be playing the Black Ice mod. This is a immersion mod to overhaul most, on possibly nearly all, of the mechanics in Hearts of Iron 4 to make a different experience of Hearts of Iron 4. Black Ice was quite famous in Hearts of Iron 3 for making the game more in-depth, adding new features, possibilities, and different paths. Um, yeah. This, unlike other mods, like for instance Road to 56, which concentrate on making alternative history paths, uh, Black Eyes mod tries to concentrate on creating an immersive historical experience. So it's more about the historical than about, um, well, creating an alternative history. And this is the world. As you see, the color palette's a little bit different. You see a lot of the communist countries are similar colors as well. A lot of the fascist nations seem to have like a slight green hue to them, I've noticed. Seems to be like an intentional theme that they've gone with. Even though Paraguay is um, green. Throwing off the color scheme, okay? Completely throwing it off. There are a few nations as well. Tunisia, Morocco. The Ethiopian Empire. Nice. And Egypt and... Uh, Mandatory Palestine. Ooh, never even noticed that was even there. All right, we are going to play as Germany without a big surprise. It's kind of a bit of a boo moment. I know Germany again. I know another Germany. Um, but the modders have focused the most around the German experience. So most of the game's features are centric to Germany. And as a secondary as well, uh, because they're centric around Germany, most of the features that are integrated with Germany work the best overall. So there's a lot to go through here. I am uh, not going to read that block of text. You can pause it right now and read that text if you want. It gives an outline of what you need to do and what, how to do it. Performance is an issue in this mod. Option two is to unify South America. Uh, unify South America without Brazil. This is an option basically to speed up the game's performance because this game adds so much extra features, it can bog the game down a little bit. So there are some ways we can speed it up. And we can speed it up by unifying South America. Unify South America without Brazil. We're going to unify South America. Holy Ecuador, Batman. Amazing. So, these nations don't participate largely in World War II, so it's not a big deal. There's an option to unify without Brazil, because Brazil does play an active role near the last latter years of the war. So that is something that is uh, nice to know. And here we go, boys. The NATO symbols that I really don't, aren't a fan of. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of NATO. But here we go, as you get a breakdown of the kind of research available to you, there are a lot of different research paths. We are going to go for a bit of a boring build, to be honest with you. I want to try and simplify this as much as possible to make it understand for you guys. So I understand a lot of people recommend a Black Ice mod, because they want to see me play it, and they want to learn how to play it. I'll try my best to explain everything. I must admit, hands up in the air, I'm not an expert, okay? I'm going to give you my best understanding. Feel free in the comments below if there's any areas that I've completely missed by a mile that I can need to correct. And you can drop it in the comments below and I will have a gander. So here you go, lots of extra equipment. You Not only do you have to build equipment now, but you have to build uniforms. That's right, you build uniforms. Crazy, right? We're not going to focus on the Navy because as I said, we're trying to simplify this as much as possible. If you want to come back to this mod later on and try and make it more complex for you by going down different paths, maybe having a Navy maybe and other possible other paths, feel free to do that in your own time. But not today. Not today! Cash, you say? We want some cash. So we are going to go for a cast majority build. And we are going to go for infantry heavy with armor build. You, know, you get the drift. You know where we're going with this. So here we go. Not only are the research more complex and the production, but you also have got a lot more support brigades too. And a lot more different options to work with. So this is your primary infantry template. And we are going to modify that as time goes on. We'll probably make six of those to begin with and keep pumping them out to get our overall army size larger so therefore we can uh, well then we can uh, work on uh, restoring Germany's gl former glory I will right, we'll move all the divisions to here move all of you guys to here uh, okay so you've got some other options of things to build I think what I'll do is is I'm playing the game I'll explain mechanics I'm not just gonna overwhelm with information because I understand it when you do a watch a let's play and some people just explains everything that's out the, of the uh, let's play it's just so boring so we're not gonna do that we're just gonna build what we need to begin with and go from there steel mill okay we're gonna make some city factories 
Actually, do we make civvies to begin with? I think probably focusing on oil to begin with is probably going to be a little bit more beneficial. So if you notice, Germany is split into east and west. I wonder why that is. Hmm, thinking face. Historical, you say. Historical, you say. So that's what we're going to work on. This is going to be a big kerfuffle. So we're going to work on, first of all, on concentrated industry. Um, actually, no, I'm going to work on disperse. They've nerfed concentrated in this mod. So it's not as viable as it once was. To make life really confusing, um, they've switched around the colors. Apparently, this is how it used to be in Hearts of Iron 3. And that's the reason why it is what it is, what we're looking at right now. So, green now means not research, and yellow means research. So, it's like the reverse opposite. And trust me, in this game, I'm going to make that mistake many different times, and you'll laugh at me. And it'll, be, it'll be funny, though. It'll be funny, hopefully. Hopefully, it'll be funny. Reinforce rate is a good meme. I'm going to go ahead of time for electronics. We're going to focus on electronics first, and then migrate onto other things and whatnot. So we eventually want to go for World War II Doctrines, but we can't do that yet, because we need to do the World War I Doctrines. There's one that we've not done, it's called Rolling Barrage. Barrage. And then once we've done that, we can move from there. We're going to make some more convoys too, because the convoys are a meme, right? Can only have a maximum of six naval dot yards per ship production, so that's the reason why you can't make too many. As you can see, we're behind on a lot of stuff here. So one of the hidden mechanics of this mod, we'll start rolling the game now. Oh, actually, we need to pick a national focus. Uh, we are going to go for the Goring four-year plan. Oh, we can't do that one yet. So the red ones means we can't do them. The greens one, we can't do them. I guess yellow means we've done them, I guess. Oh, we'll do Rhineland. We'll do Rhineland first. Okay, great. So we'll play the game now. Four speed. Here we go. Okay, green command, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we'll go through this to go from... So you can form extra divisions, and I'm going to say no to all of these. So just to let you know, in Hearts of Iron 4, Waking the Tiger, there's an option to create SS divisions that are pre-constructed templates that start off with zero strength, and you add equipment to them, and you build them up. You can't modify these templates, and you can't delete them. And I personally hate that mechanic. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I can't disband them, and I can't modify them. I'm stuck with these divisions that I might not necessarily like. So every time I get a pop-up saying, do you want to create a specific division, a historical division of that time and era, I'm going to say no to it. If you want to think differently and play historical, quote-unquote, feel free to do that. You can do that. Don't be, don't, don't, my decisions in this game don't affect your enjoyment or how you should play it. You play it how you prefer. So you get the most enjoyment out of the game. So, there's a mechanic in this game called uh, Army Command. I'm going to call it Army Command. Um, and depending on the level of HQ equipment that you've got sat in your inventory, it can affect some army buffs. So, you've got the Green Army Command. So, we have a very, very uh, inefficient and also disorganized, inexperienced Army Command. So, how do you increase your Army Command to read these debuffs and get some buffs? Turn the debuffs to buffs. You basically produce more HQ equipment. The maximum is 35,000 to get the best bonus. And this is it. It's called Division Stab Equipment. Don't know what stab stands for, is it? No, I really don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I have not the fuckiest idea. Okay, so we're doing the business. Building all the things, doing the things, all the good stuff. Put you guys here. We don't want to make any more tanks for now. We are probably going to make some trucks later on, but not now. Machine guns, eh? Infantry gun. Which is like a, uh, I guess a smaller artillery piece, I think. Horse equipment? Madness. Armored cars? Wow. What the hell is these? Oh, I deleted them. Alright, we're good now. So we're just going to produce equipment. And do the thing. And all the things. Perfect. We're producing. We're doing the stuff. Forgot about the Air Force and merged them all together. To, as, as you're probably gathering from watching this now, you, you're starting to get an idea what this mod's all about. It's about literally adding to the existing Hoi 4 experience to make it more in-depth. I don't want to use the word complicated, more complicated, but technically it, it is actually making the game more complicated. Um, some of the decisions of this mod, I'll put my hands up and say I don't agree with. And some on the other hand, I actually enjoy the experience. I think the production aspect and the research aspect is not my favorite. But the combat aspect is really good. They made some adjustments to how combat works. And it creates this scenario where defense is stronger and making breakthroughs is more difficult. And it adds an extra layer of challenge that I really like. I like it a lot. 
Naval Dockyard. I don't think so. Restocking boost. Yeah, sure, we need that one. So one of the mechanics that's actually kind of crucial is mobilization. So we're on... Where's mobile? It's this one. Standing army. So we want to move to limited mobilization. It removes some of the debuffs. Yeah, let's do that. So if you're not mobilized while you're at war, your army does suffer from some uh, big penalties to organization and whatnot. And then when you do mobilize, you go into... Oh, form an extra division. We can't say no to that, so we're going to have to say yes to it. So if your army's not mobilized, you suffer from penalties. Whereas, and right now we are mobilizing. It takes one of five weeks to mobilize. And while this is happening, you can't change your mobilization law. So the better you do it, the earlier you do it, the better. So we've gone from standing army to limited mobilization. And then the final is general mobilization, which we are ready for war. It looks like the less mobilized you are, the more buffs you get for construction and production. So you're moving your, your men, basically, your manpower from the factories into the field. So that's where they're overwhelmingly concentrated. Armored Spearhead, Schwerpunkt, Blitzkrieg. We are going to go for the Doctrine Boost because we are going to take advantage of those. So the matter of what we're trying to do right now is the same Hoi 4 experience where you build up your overall army size so you can uh, start to uh, do Anschluss and then Sudeton. Limited mobilization is complete, so now we are a more limited mobilization zones, company zones. Alright, move everyone here, and then we're going to adjust some of these templates. Some of these are adjustable, and some of them are not. So this is like a specific, like, German Defense Elite Battalion somehow. Eh, I'll just stick that on Berlin. There we go. Put that here, put that on reserves. So as you can see, I can't delete a lot of these, because some of these divisions are, like, set of what they are. So what I'm going to do is separate them. This is going to be really tedious and kind of lame, but I'm not a big fan of these divisions that you can't modify. Infantry tactics, doctrines, research. Then we're going to go for this one that gives the panzer tactics. You can't, you can't delete those divisions, but you can modify them. These ones can be modified too, so move them here. I think we are more left off with divisions now that can be changed. Alright, so these ones cannot be changed. What are they? They're decent divisions. I wonder why they cannot be changed. This one can. And these ones can't. So we'll just sit them on this guy. There we go, done. We are in one place now, yep. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so we've separated all the the riffraff from the good ones, so we'll convert them all to infantry now. This so you're wondering why I've just done just there. So I guess in a, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'll level with you. This is probably destroying some of the immersion, because now we don't have historical divisions technically. Uh, I'm trying to because this mod is quite complex and there's so much going on. I'm trying to simplify it to make it easy to digest. And by making all divisions one template for now, we won't, well, that will change. It just makes it easier to micromanage your army, that's all. We more than likely will adjust this template as well to make it a little bit easier to uh, play and digest. We can also change to excellent education too, which reduces research time and max planning as well. But reduces construction and also adds extra consumer goods. Yeah, we're going to go for that. Someone on the uh, Black Eyes team recommended that to me. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll take his advice. So right now we have over 100,000 pieces of HQ equipment. So now we have a better buff. So now long we're, we're no longer the green army now. Oh, hang on, I just realized we've got Mepho bills. I don't forget about my Mephos. Right at the bottom. So right now we no longer have the green army buff. We have now the small, um, where is it? Here we go, the trained army. So now we have the bonus. But we still have a penalty for training time and a penalty for research. So we have between 1,000 and 10,000 HQ equipment. We'll talk more about HQ equipment a little bit later on because it, it makes more sense when you start using it. How, or oh, it's just not this big thing that you stockpile, you know. It kind of has more uses than that. 
So towed pack, 66 days. Horse artillery, 1,178 days. Where am I using, even using horse artillery? Am I using horse artillery? We'll get rid of you, that's an MP division. This is the Defense of Berlin Division. This is a tank division. Get rid of you. A very small artillery division. And this is our main infantry template. We're going to go for the default one because I'm boring like that. I, I'm not a big fan of the NATO ones. I know, I know NATO counters are more immersive because it feels like a more historical experience. And you look at the historical maps and divisions and stuff and you see the actual icons. I get it. There's pros and cons for both and I, I gather that. But my personal preference is the sprites. I prefer the sprites over the... Um, yeah, I prefer the sprites over the NATO symbols. It is a personal preference. Please. We all like different flavors. Some people like chocolate and some people like vanilla. I'm just a vanilla man, okay? Please no hate, my mate. Turn these off so I don't have to read the notification button for over and over and over and freaking again. Uh, focus the problems of the people is a good one because it reduces, it increases stability. We are going to get more stability, so we'll do that. These are foreign forces. This is how you build up your SS troops. I'm not going to do much of that, though. Because I'm not really interested in that. HQ gives extra reinforce rate and planning speed. Sure. As you can see, now we're making a lot of equipment, which is always good. Now I'm going to make lots of casts as well. Making those uniforms, SS uniforms. I don't think we're going to make many of those. Coastal artillery. I don't think we're going to make many of those either. Infantry mechanized. I don't think we're going to make many of those either. SS field uniforms mod 35. Oh, we, we don't even we don't even need those at all. Ah, okay, that's fine. So if you want a breakdown of what equipment you need, you click on the division and you look on this list here and it shows all the equipment that you need to make the division. Any equipment you are missing will damage the overall strength of the division, therefore its combat effectiveness will be reduced as it works in normal Hoi 4. I could have read the flavor events out, but I'm more in a kind of play and tutorial mode than playing the... Uh, normal game if you guys want a tutorial based on reading out events and story and flavor let me know because i can do that for you as well but i don't know i've noticed that a lot of people in my community aren't a big fan of that kind of stuff they much prefer they much prefer me just to play the game and be the tutorial guy which i'm totally cool doing that because i i enjoy the experience of the game i'm less about the lore and the story and more about the uh the combat and the war. So if you wanted to, just for the lols, if you really wanted to, you could uh, completely adjust how your nation is and you could make a democratic, um, well, Mr. Fuhrer, I guess. Okay. Might as well rush that. I'm going to do that. So, let's talk a little bit about the new buildings. Okay, let's do the four speed. So, you can build tank workshops, truck workshops, artillery workshops, etc, etc, etc. What do they do? So, when you make more equipment factories <clears throat> of certain types, you reduce the cost of producing that equipment. So, if I was to produce lots of small arms factories and place them around your nation, it says there, each factory will reduce the production cost of small arms, light infantry weapons, common and special infantry equipment, and support HQ, recon, and garrison equipment. So, if you are particularly specking into a certain area, it is really worthwhile to uh, get the factories to produce those equipment more quickly. It is very effective for planes. It is very effective for... Um, Tanks. I think in this scenario we are going to go for lots of tanks. The Spanish Civil War, eh? Ay, 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 ay. Oh, he said no. Wow. 
Wow, Franco, I can't believe it, dude. I thought we were buddies. I thought we were bros. I'm gonna send some planes. So what's that cast? We have fighters, we have multi-role fighters. I guess the multi-roles are kind of cool, I guess. Ideally, I want the Cass. Night Harassment. Yes. I really don't know what these are, but we'll send them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go here, do that. So let's say support. What the frick is this? I think that's like a seaplane, isn't it? A flying boat, what? Boats that can fly, madness. Also the airports are 125 in total size as well. That's something to be aware of too. Uh, you're probably thinking that's a strange number, and it took me a while to get my head around it too. But apparently, if you make a stack of a thousand and you split it like five times, you get a stack of a 125. Which, when I was told that, that's actually like was like mind blowing to me. It was like, what? That's actually great, more convenient. So, what are you doing on the World War One doctrine? You can do the World War Two ones, and conveniently, now you've done that, you can load up to here and see all the doctrines. Where are they? Where are they? There we go. World War Two doctrines. Oh, mobile warfare, you say? Ah, what a great idea! What a great idea. Uh, do we get a theorist? Yes, Blitzkrieg Doctrine. Yes. Good. Ideally, I'd like to send him an attaché, but he's not up for it. He don't want it. He don't want it. The SS Junklinson. I guess this is some kind of SS reform and it gives you an extra research slot, so I'm winning. You make the Hitler Youth as well, I guess that gives you manpower. I don't really like these too much because they don't really tell you too much about what they do. So I'm not big on that. What we can go for now is the four year goring plan, which is like a way of boosting Hitler's economy, uh, well, Germany's economy, before the, the war begins, which we will focus on. Immediately. I'm surprised they've not changed the doctrine, you know. They've got exactly the same doctrines with exactly the same boosts. I thought they would have overflow overhauled that. Strangers have spent so much time on World War One doctrines that are already currently already researched. And then World War Two ones, they've not even touched it. I would imagine that is something that they are going to work on. I would imagine. We're gonna go for some CAS. So we are gonna spam CAS. There are a few features in this mod that are currently still in development. One, money. And two, these resource buttons. What do these do? Well, at the moment, nothing. This is also an interesting thing, too. Allied anger. So depending on what national focus you choose to do, it can wind up the allies. And the quicker you wind them up, the more likely they are to go to war to you and do something about it. And uh, if you're sneaky, you can try and uh, keep them uh, on your side for longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. And that means you can... Uh, Annex more land, conquer, crush, kill, destroy, etc, etc. Yep, I think we are all good. There probably are some advisors that I could hire right now that would probably... Captain of Industry increases infrastructure and... Yeah, that's a good one. The bonuses are a lot smaller than in the base game, but they'll do. They'll do. All right, so we are producing more divisions. We are pumping them out. So what's a good thing to do right now is probably just check on what we're making the most of. Ooh, hello, hello, hello. Got some extra production we can assign. Here in Hanover's good. Here, here, here. Trying to pump out as much oil as, as I can early on just to get the uh, the oil economy going. Because I know it's a late game. That's something you run into a lot of problems with. So it's, sort of, it's better if I get it sorted now than later. A lot of the advisors at the start of the game are already assigned. I'm not sure I'm... I, I spoke about this when I was live streaming this game, and I think I'm not a big fan of that. I understand the game's all about immersion, and it likes to go down a historical paths. I get that. I understand that. I just... Uh, I don't know. I get a lot of enjoyment out of um, picking the advisors from the get-go. I'm going to go with Junkers, because it makes the cast cheaper. Go for the Fug... Fug... 
fudge five? Okay. Can't go for that one yet, I don't think. Nope. So research is kind of uh, at a loss right now. 1939, this increases recovery rate, breakthrough. Basically gives better trucks, I think. Oil plant has been researched. Rush that one? No, it's way too far ahead. There are a few other little bonuses in production too that are worthwhile too. Uh, entrenchment, construction bonus. Factory output of oh, research, that one. Yeah, again, I'm getting the colors mixed up again. And we've got most of those. Tank one's good too. Get the tank workshop. And there's also this one here. Machine tools is also pretty good too. This game is a little bit overwhelming at first. It's one of those ones you've got to play several times to get the kind of feel of what's kind of happening. Once you've got the feel, you can uh, you can pretty much understand it with ease. Okay, so what we're going to do now, which is very controversial, but what I'm going to do is make this division simpler. Why? Because that way I can uh, focus on what equipment I want to make. Logistics, off-car road use, support equipment. Off-road cars, off-road cars, horse artillery. Okay, we're going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of the anti-tank too. Infantry equipment, support equipment, manpower. This is the one that uses the most. Radios, off-road, light infantry, field uniforms, HQ equipment. Oh, my boy. So, HQ equipment gets attached onto your infantry or your tanks, and it gives a massive attack bonus of 15%. Massive, huge, big, amazing. Uh, but it also suffers from a big movement penalty. So, the way it kind of works is the more combat you're involved in, the more of this HQ equipment you will lose. And therefore, the more HQ equipment you lose, the overall impact of these bonuses that you get. Ooh, MIFO bills, MIFO. The more of the bonuses you'll get, take advantage of from here, not general staff. It's here. So when we get 35,000 HQ equipment, then we can uh, not have to make as many of those as we once were. Um, how's the equipment going? Fine. Horse artillery. Why are we still making horse artillery? None of this is horse artillery, is it? Oh, it actually uses horse artillery. Wow, I never actually knew that. Okay. Oh, because that, that's what tows the equipment, doesn't it? Okay, it all makes sense now. Okay. Yeah, so the artillery isn't towed by a truck. It's towed by horses. Which kind of makes sense. It doesn't really ever get explained that in the normal base game, does it? Never quite gets explained. As I said, I'm still producing lots of HQ equipment because I want to make sure I've got lots and lots and lots of it. The more of the HQ equipment I have got, the better I'm going to be at my combat readiness -ness -ness. Alrighty then. Tank bonuses for production. We are going to go down the tanks route eventually. For now, we're just trying to produce as much as we can early on. Everything else is looking pretty swell. Getting our bonuses for doctrine. More supports are a wee bit low. So you can see that as time goes on, your uh, weekly change of war support goes up or down. So we're going to, we're investing more into Goring's four-year plan. It has a temporary output penalty, but overall construction speed bus boofs are boofs are huge. Light armor researched extraordinarily quickly. So we can go for Anschluss, and we have 750,000 manpower, and it's after the 1st of March 1938. So hence you get the kind of the idea of uh, how everything's kind of tried to play out historically. Treaty with the USSR, might as well do that one now. Which gives a few boosts for tank research, which is always nice. A little bit of oil, which is always good. Junkers 87 Stuka. I love saying Stuka. Stuka. There we go. 
No, not the transport plane, you moron. Where's the Stuka? The Stuka. So is that junk at 87 yards? Scroll to the top. Soviets accept the Soviet dream agreement, yes. There are a lot of national focus in this mod as well that are shorter than in a base game as well. That's always something nice to know. Like this one, for instance, takes nine days. Anyway, I think I've got the basics down. I think we've done most of the production and construction stuff. This is going to be a little bit slow to begin with, but when the war kicks off, you kind of get an idea of all the things I've done and why they are, well, why they are effective and why they're going to benefit me and hopefully steamroll my allies. Just to let you know the goal of this campaign, I'm going to eliminate Poland, France, and I am going to try unless to take out the Soviet Union, and we'll call it quits there. More than likely, just this game running a little bit slower than the other mods and the other games and the vanilla. Um... I don't want to make it a long, drawn-out campaign. But who knows? Maybe I'll have a lot of fun and maybe I'll change mine. Who knows? Don't forget to like and to subscribe. Click on the bell icon to be notified of future episodes. Also, be aware, in the playlist, in the top of the description, as well as the pinned comment at the top of the comment section, uh, you'll be able to access to all the episodes of this series after when it is released. So you can watch them all and binge them all one by one, all in one go, if that is what you choose to do so. And I do totally do not mind if you watch this video on times too. I will see you guys next time. And I hope you have an awesome day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.